July was a very, very long month. Working between 65 and 75 hours a week for the entire month really drove home the whole you'll sleep when you're dead mentality, and it's left me with little time to film less approach the chalkboard. But today, friend, today is Saturday, and a Saturday where I don't have to work, so I finally have time to show you what happened over the past month through the lens of trying to recreate it all in one day. So I woke up thinking about how all of those what if X song was by X artist or genre videos are made, how would I incorporate my trusty chalkboard into this video where it already had an artsy vloggers chalklist intro that just flew by the screen, and lastly, how I could fit math into something different, unexpected, and refined. Something like Owen Wilson's wow. Got it. Here's the plan. So there are three parts. First, we need to get a recording of Owen Wilson's wow. Then we have to write some code, which is the black box of this operation. And then three, running this code on the sound file will make the magic happen, whatever that means at this point. The idea behind this three-pronged plan is just a bit of surface level foyer analysis. One, sounds are waves. Two, foyer series can be used to approximate waves with cosine and sine functions. Three, from one and two, I should be able to make the wow with a cosine and sine functions. And thus, I began my endeavor scrubbing through YouTube's wide repository of compilations of clips of Owen Wilson's wows, some in chronological order, some random, but most of them surprisingly passed through the full list of his filmography. Clips of greats like Wedding Crashers, Zoolander, and surprisingly even Marley and Me played with the acoustic gold that is Owen Wilson's wow. Eventually, I got it. So now that we had the sound, all we needed to do was create the code that would transform the sound into a series of sine and cosine waves, and then use that foyer series to generate a new process sound that would play back the wow. So how was I doing in this coding endeavor? Not great. I have forgotten all of my Python skills, and I don't really understand what's in a WAV file, and I don't have the the whole like process of what I actually need to do with that data down to a T, so. But despite this concerned expression, my wandering eyes and my protruding neck vein or tendon, unclear which I was a math man and not an anatomy dude, I still had Google on my side and I was able to learn a bit about how dot .wav files work, or at least the data that they store and how to read them with Python. At a high level, a dot .wav file is just a plot of data points that happens to correspond to sound. When recording the sound, the sampling rate determines how often the recorder will check in on the current amplitude of the sound that you're recording. For the recording I did, and for most recordings, the sample rate is a default 44,100 samples per second. Now, if you were somehow recording a perfect run-of-the-mill sine wave without any additional machinery, one, write a paper about that. That's freaking amazing. Do you know how hard it would be to do that? And two, if you had a sampling rate of four samples every pi seconds, then the wave file would encode the wave like so, visually. But the computer would just see a list, kind of like this one. Armed with this knowledge, I had a place to start, but I actually still needed to figure out how to use it. So I took a mental break to relax and digest what I had learned. Good thing too, because this transition from earlier left my bed a total mess. So with the force of a great typhoon and a little editing, I Marie Kondoed my room, and then with a point of a finger, I was back at it with a prototype. Okay, so this is sort of how it works. Plug in a sound file into the program. The program will spit out some numbers. I'll take those numbers and put them into a Google Doc. I'll take the numbers from that Google Doc and I will put them into a, a Mathematica notebook. And then I will get out a sound. Yes, that is the word I was looking for. The only problem is, is that the sound looks, looks pretty bad. So much so that Mathematica is warning me that this file contains potentially unsafe dynamic content. So, that is your warning. I'm gonna go ahead and play one of these sounds. Uh, it's not pleasant, so I would recommend that you turn the volume very, very low for this. Uh, but I'm gonna play it anyway for, you know, the heck of it. And yeah, this is gonna be painful. So, this was the first attempt. 
not great, right? So I definitely didn't get what I wanted to, but I think I can explain what's wrong. So we should probably go back to the, the chalkboard so I can tell you about that. So to explain what's wrong, I should probably start by saying exactly what a foyer series is. Because up until this point, I have completely avoided every opportunity to clarify this. A foyer series of n terms, f sub n, can be written as follows. If for some reason you're keeping track, I know it looks like there are two n minus one terms here, but we're just counting terms as the number of k's we're going through. So here, zero to n minus one is n k's. And thus, by the convention I'm using here, there are n terms. Great, I've written down a ton of symbols, but to start, I just want to look at the sine portion of this mathematical fiend. Graphically, we can draw out each sine wave and the sum just combines them into one wavy curve. The phi is only here because we're going to use this with actual sound data that isn't scaled to one. If it was, we would end up distorting Owen Wilson's iconic wow, and that would defeat the purpose of this video and be more work on the coding end of having to scale and rescale that sound. So we're not gonna do that. So since phi is here to party, we're gonna go ahead and do some math and determine what phi is. That is, phi will force the period of the n equals one term to be the length of the recorded sound. For us, that's a whole 0.64 seconds of totally unadulterated OW wow. So recognizing that the period of sine of x is just two pi, and the period of sine of phi x is just two pi over phi, then we can derive that phi should be two pi over 0.64. Now that we've done a bit of trig in algebra, why don't we just go ahead and bump it up a notch the calculus? I mean, we're gonna have to do this in order to figure out what the code is doing to generate the coefficients that are producing Owen Wilson's wow, or at least up until this point are producing total crap. Mathematically, we have a sound, which we can plot, where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is the intensity of the sound at that time. We'll call this plot f of t, and under the assumption that a Fourier series exists for this sound, we then have the equality between f of t and this mess of a limit. Qualitatively, the a0 over 2 term is just the average intensity of the sound over the entire sound's length. Luckily, there's a calculus formula for finding that average. The average value of a function over given values of that function is just 1 over the length between those values times the integral over those values of the function. For us, that looks like this, but not truly, because we only have data, but we have around 44,100 samples of data, or actually way less, because it's only 0.64 seconds, so 0.64 times 44,100 seconds. Dang it, chalkboard Nathan, you shouldn't have written 44,100. Anyway, so we have that number of samples to work with. Since we're limited by the finite data set, we have to do some janky approximations in the code using Riemann sums, which for the first coefficient would look like so. But what about the other ones? You can't capture Owen Wilson's wow, much less any other sound with a flat line. We actually need waves to work with here. As it turns out, we only need to slightly manipulate the calculation to find the other coefficients for the sine and cosine terms in the Fourier series. There's also a way to couple the coefficients together for each k into one complex coefficient. I really don't want to get into the weeds now, but here are some formulas, and I've linked to an amazing video that shows a different way of using Fourier series to draw pictures. Um, by three blue, one brown, which is super great. Um, that's in the description below. And he does a really good job of illustrating the complex coefficient version of these series as well. So now that I've explained what a Fourier series is, I can tell you what's wrong. Well, actually I could have told you what was wrong earlier because it's a bit anticlimactic. Um, the program was doing the things correctly. It was generating the coefficients in the, the desired way. I was just being stupid and I replaced e negative 0 0.5 with 10 to the negative fifth instead of with star 10 to the negative fifth. So I was getting very, very small coefficients for the things that had the um, the, ten, uh, the e negative 0 0.5 there and when I was replacing them so Mathematica would go through them faster because apparently I had forgotten how to use a scientific notation in Mathematica. Um, it, made those um, 
really crazy peaks, which gave the really annoying sound. So, you know, we all make mistakes, even stupid tiny ones. Uh, but with that all aside, we can go back to me after I ran the code, after I had figured out the stupid mistake, and yeah. So when I started recording this video, I only did a thousand coefficients and it sounds nothing like there's no discernible wow in there at all. But I bumped it up to 2000 coefficients and you can kind of make out the wow. It's not perfect at all, but it's there. Yeah. So I guess I sort of did it. Uh, in a really janky way. I don't know if adding more coefficients would actually do anything. Mind you, this, the rendering of this sound, took like a whole five minutes. Uh, which I guess says more about my computer than the process itself. That is what Owen Wilson's WoW would be if it was by a FOIA series uh, with 2,000 coefficients and not Owen Wilson. So, yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, this video was kind of a roller coaster. I was just very excited about finally being able to do a video again, and so I was just like, heck with it. I'm gonna have as much fun with it as I possibly can. And having done that, I really enjoy how this turned out. Um, so anyway, if you enjoyed it too, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you would like to see more mathematics videos and more mathematical content, you can subscribe to Chalk by clicking up over there where the thing popped up or the red subscribe button below this video somewhere or wherever it is on screen now. Uh, as always, this is Nathan. Uh, well, no, <laughs> I am Nathan. This is Chalk and I will see you next time. Ooh.